So, good evening. Good evening. I think we are ready to grow. I think we have a few more people joining us uh, during the course of the evening. So, my name is Przemysl Pella. I'm director of the Czech Center. I'm very delighted to see quite a few of you here. Also, some men, which is wonderful, considering the, the topic of the, the, the presentations. I have to confess uh, the idea of the program uh, Women uh, in, in Focus have been sitting in the back of my mind for already uh, some time. It's been somewhat delayed during the, the pandemic and I'm very pleased that we are launching this uh, series uh, today. So the objective of the, of the program is to introduce inspiring uh, female personalities, uh, their accomplished professional uh, journeys. The series also aims to unveil through dialogue and open discussion with you the audience uh, intricacies of various fields like arts, ballet, uh, science, fashion industry, architectures and many, uh, many others. So our guest speakers will address the challenges that they have encountered as professional women working often in the male-dominated environment and they will share practices that led to their successful and rewarding accomplishments. So I'm very delighted that the inaugural guest and the, our first speaker is Monica Cikova, who is uh, the art historian, writer, and curator of modern and contemporary art collection in the National Gallery, Prague. So Monica has ample professional experiences from working in the private but also in, in public uh, galleries and also with private art collectors. Currently she's curating the next Photograph Festival 2023, Hypertension 23 at the National Gallery Prague and Aura at WAG uh, 2 at the Bromo Monastery which I'm, center, which I'm certain we will hear uh, more in a few moments. So Monica graduated from Charles University, where she studied history of art. Uh, as a final piece of introduction, uh, I like to say that Monica has been recently awarded with prestigious curatorial residency at the Delfina Foundation here in London, which gives us the opportunity to invite her this evening. So without any further ado, I would like to ask Monica to join us for the presentation and then we're going to have a uh, discussion and Q&A with the audience. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Monica and uh, thanks to Przemysl for inviting me and have a chance to share with you my two main topics which I'm currently working on and uh, it was right that uh, I will talk about hypertension and Aura at the Gale project which is based on my discussion with Archibald of Benedictine Order and it's based in Brumo Monastery, which is an amazing place in the Czech Republic. It's mostly in the middle of nowhere. It's in the eastern Bohemia, in the place with very dark history and very close to the border with Poland. So this is my show, it's hypertension. So I was I asked by Photograph Festival to do a show about photography, but you know, I mostly am focused on paintings and I did many shows about paintings, but it's funny that they always ask me to do something about the photography, but I, I think I, I don't understand it so much. So uh, then I realized that I could do the show uh, and I look at the photography as a derivative of uh, my life in online space, in the digital space. And so this show is asking you, how are you? So. Yeah, this is sketches for uh, our design. It's actually generated by artificial intelligence because I used uh, AI for many projects for generating pictures or text as you will see later. And there is a list of your artists. So you can see that uh, it's quite international group show which uh, with artists, uh, some of them are based in London. So <coughs> you probably know them very well. So it's Marcus Selgel, Cecilia Evans, Ian Chink, Lawrence Lexin, Vikings, Stefan Mulvoren, Johannes Poradjus, Stefan Komilenk, and Czech artist Martin Goho. Uh, so uh, mostly uh, Photograph Festival is divided into many, many shows and many, many projects, and it's very exhausting even for me. So I made a decision and I will do just one big group show and 
then also the project in a public space. So yeah, uh, this is the only slide with the text I promise you. So uh, with this project, uh, I'm like asking uh, how we feel uh, in digital space because I think that we are living in a time of the heightened human body transformation that we begin something as a digital fluid matter in all aspects of our life. So uh, I call it hypertension, which is actually a medical term denoting high blood pressure because I think that we are still under pressure to react to something, to have some emotions and some feelings and you know like photographs wants to like it, video wants to watch it and hashtags needs uh, like recognitions. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, a new identity of a human being. So this is, uh, the show is about the new digital self, which is more extreme uh, than ever before. Yeah, as you can see, there is the cover of The Economist from 2017, which was asking if the data are the new oil, but now we can ask if the emotions can be a new oil. Uh, the show will be held at the Fair Trade Palace. It's the one of the building of National Gallery Prague. It's in the wonderful uh, part of Prague on Letna. And it's a very specific building. It's a huge one. It's very huge. It has five floors. So um, I, I probably know that the Czech art scene is quite small, but we have like eight buildings in National Gallery Prague. And this building is focused on the art from 19th and 20th century. So it's very hard to do, you know, this kind of uh, contemporary current shows. So we have we have permanent exhibitions, and on some floors we are doing these current shows. And as you can see, it's, the house was built uh, in functionalism style, and at the time it was one of the biggest buildings built in functionalism. Uh, so next to the list of contemporary artists, I invited Lynn Hirschman Lisa. Maybe some of you visited the, the last Venice Biennale and you could see her work at the Venice. And uh, I invited her because she's a completely different generation and she's something as a prologue to the group show, which is really about young contemporary art. But uh, in the 70s, she created her alter ego, which was called Roberta Breitmore. And I am doing uh, a little retrospective about her alter ego, about Roberta Breitmore. So I'm doing a retrospective about the fiction character. So at that time, uh, between 1973 and 1978, she lived as a Roberta Breitmore. It wasn't just about some physical changes, about changing her clothes and have a good makeup, but she also rented a flat, she visited a psychotherapist, she had her hour room driver license, and she uh, was trying to have some social contacts so we are doing, and yeah, this part of the show will be uh, the only part about photography. So then you will, uh, so then the show will be divided into three parts. The first one will talk about the metaverse, about the virtual space, which is, which is occupied by avatars with strong emotions. So here you can see uh, the show from Cecil B. Evans' video and Marco Selge. And I will not show all of the artists, but just, just to have some feelings about what the show will be. So this is uh, the shot from Martin Koho, Czech artist. It's uh, the chapter about modern isolation, about intersection between new technologies and public space. Lawrence Luck. Yeah, and uh, so the... For me, the biggest part of the exhibition is the part of talking about post-gentrism and post-humanism. So in this area, we will uh, present the work of uh, Sid Weikin, Stefan Lovaren, Johannes Porader, and Markus Sergel. So uh, the part, uh, the third part of this uh, huge photograph festival will be the project with uh, Shimon Bazar, maybe you know him. Uh, he published a book which is called The Extreme Cell with Hans Ulrich Obrist and uh, Douglas Complet. Douglas Complet. And um, 
I was quite inspired by this book because it's kind of like a graphic novel which is combining text and visual material so you can go through and you can see this kind of uh, a statement such as the 20th century was about what belongs to who, the 21st century is about who belongs to what. So, and uh, we choose like several pages from this book and we will uh, show them on the windows of the National Gallery of Prague. So, uh, it's, in, it's, it's good to say that uh, they were also inspired by this famous Marshall McLuhan book, uh, The Medium is the Massage. So, yeah, and uh, before the extreme self, they publish this book, The Age of Earthquakes. So I invited Shimon Baza to work on this project. This is just sketches for visuals, and this is all images generated by AI. And we ask AI to generate uh, kind of sort of images, and then we ask her again to uh, to put away some kind of elements which are doing these photos so specific. Yeah, and this studio which is working on the graphic design is called Animate Studio, it's a Czech studio. So uh, this exhibition, Hypertension, is based on my two little previous exhibition project. This is Fantasy Finery from 20, uh, 2020, and uh, it was a very little show at uh, Berlinske model. It's one of our artist run spaces. It's quite long uh, running. I think they were founded more than 10 years ago. And they are very specific because the show happened just one evening, on a Wednesday evening, and artist is also cooking. Except of this show. This show was for artists. And so I invited uh, a group of uh, artists you can see them up, uh, up. Vanessa Conte, Jung Shankri, Mel Odom, and Emma Pratt. So and instead of exhausting curatorial text, I use these hashtags. And I should say that this show was happening during one of the first pauses after the lockdown in Czech. It was a very weird atmosphere. And we invited some you know, journalists and people from abroad, and they were like quite surprising that, that we are like, doing that nothing happened. So, it was very strange, but it's important to say because uh, maybe you remember that at the beginning of the lockdown, this famous erotic uh, web Pornhub offered a content for the free for a limited time. So, and the numbers of clients com was so high. So, <laughs> well, and at that time they were uh, they were um, promoted this kind of uh, anime erotic movies. So. I was inspired by this moment of, you know, like different kind of to our, like intimate relationship and that we completely had to change relationship to other humans and the technologies. So I was inspired by Westward as well, which is very famous uh, TV series on HBO, which is based on the old movie, same name, old movie from, I guess, 70s. If somebody knows what me I don't remember it. And in, in, in this uh, westward, uh, the visitors of an, amusement of an amusement park had a strong relationship with androids. So it's like based you know, on this kind of like strong relationships to the technologies. So I was uh, inspired by digisexuality uh, with uh, sophisticated uh, sexual technologies. Yeah, and you can see on the left is Vanessa Conte and on the right is Mel Odom, which is a very interesting artist. I very often work with a different kind of generation of artists, so he was completely uh, older than the others. And actually during the 70s and 80s he was the part of American underground art scene. He was in the group of uh, people connected to Andy Warhol and he became a famous for this uh, erotic-oriented uh, art deco drawings. Yeah, this is Emma Pride. She's famous for these jewelers, sword earrings. 
Yeah, and this is the second exhibition which happened uh, last year in the private gallery, Polanski Gallery. It was also quite a small exhibition, but I was already tested something which I would like to do in the festival photography. So it was more about our fantasy, about embodied fantasy. And um, yeah, I invited artists uh, who are like, interested in uh, cyber culture, sophisticated sexual technologies. And on the floor you can see it was more than 20 kilograms of lavender and it was very, very strong. So no one could be for a long inside of this show. Yeah, so, and now we will, we will move to a completely different world, to the Bromov Monastery. And as I mentioned, uh, I work with uh, Benedictine Order, and I mean it seriously. Even though that this project is not uh, ecclesia, it's not, I mean, we are not like believers, but we are trying to have a critical dialogue uh, with the Benedictine Order and with the Catholic Church in general. I have we published so far two catalogs because so far we have two shows. So I will let you to go through. So I have more so you can So it's it's called Ora et Lege. It means pray and read and it's based on this famous uh, motto of Benedictine Order which sounds Ora et Labora. So uh, why, why I choose this uh, title? So uh, it was because uh, my friend worked as a, at the Bromov Monastery and I was very curious to do some show there, but I realized that it could be very easy to, you know, like exhibit contemporary art in this spectacular, amazing monastery. So that maybe it could be like more interesting to do some kind of like a really deep dialogue between contemporary art and um, and Catholic Church because they are like completely different area right now. You know, in the past they worked too much together. You know, Catholic Church was one of the biggest um, collectors or like doing this kind of um, uh, support to art scene. So now you can see the images of uh, content of current. Uh, I mean, this is how it looks like. I think it's amazing. It's really like in very specific town, very poor town. It has a dark uh, history, especially in the second half 20th century. Yeah, and for the first show, I invited uh, several artists at Atkins, Kamala Bishop, Jesse Darling, Liam Gillick, Martin Kohold, Florian Weissenberg, Sassen Latas. Also, some of them are based in London, so uh, probably you know their work. So, and the condition was that they have to they have to react to some topic which was uh, connected to the history of the Benedict Order. So, it it wasn't also easy for them because mostly they are like agnostic and not religious. So. Uh, yeah, this is how our catalog looks like. Yeah, this is the text uh, generated by our AI. It was the introductory text for the first show. And uh, yeah, I asked uh, AI to, uh, to write a novel on some keywords. And I really like it, so maybe you can read it later. So this is Jesse Darling, for example. So. Uh, Jessie Darling. So, except of her work, uh, all works were created especially for this show. But as she already did this this work, which is uh, inspired by Catholic Church, so I did the decision. I made a decision to exhibit this. It's in the San Adalbert Church. It's in a sacral space. It was quite like a controversial, of course, because it's called. Our Lady Batman of the Empty Center. So I, I should say that uh, the Archibald is a very open-minded person. 
uh, I mean, I was the project was without any like like how to say like limit from uh, his side. But of course, local believers and uh, priests, um, I mean, had a like problem with this show, of course, with the bit. Yeah, this is her dialogue with uh, Reverend about uh, some kind of uh, linguistic decisions which were uh, made in Bible. And so, for example, she was talking about it. Thanks to the Bible, we can. They are like the human is kind of like synonyms of shame. So they are like dis discussing this kind of like deep uh, roots of some genders linguistic problematic in the Catholic Church. This is the library. So uh, I should say that uh, one of like a very important part of uh, Benedictine order is reading. So they have to read uh, every day uh, at least two hours per day, mostly of course Bible and religious texts. Uh, but uh, in every uh, Benedictine monastery you will find wonderful libraries. So they were always very educated and of course they, they colonized that area of Czech Republic, but um, Thanks to them, uh, this era became an uh, educational center with the peak in the 17th and 18th century. At that time, it was the center of Benedictine order in Czech lands. Yeah, this is Liam Gelek. Yeah, so, I mean, it could be, I mean, at least for me, interesting to talk about every work, but maybe I will go through it uh, faster then give you a uh, space for questions. This is Sofs and Tatas. They did a series of underclass paintings about uh, the connections and dialogue between Catholic Church and Islam. So, um, the Ora at Lege was mostly based as a little biennale every uh, two years at Rome Monastery. And in the odd year, we are trying to do some project abroad. So last year we did an uh, exhibition, The Plus of Concrete Poetry, and wonderful furniture house of Georgia in Belize. There is also a little Czech center, quite new. And I uh, invited uh, artists which are working with concrete poetry uh, to react uh, proclamation no, I will, I will say later. So, just to let you know that this is this house was the palace of poetry, which was destroyed in 2013 in Tbilisi, and I was inspired by it because it was an amazing house, and I use it for the title for this show. Yeah, and this is Roger House. If you will have chance to be in Tbilisi, I will highly recommend it to you to visit this amazing uh, deco house. Uh, so, now I have to read my notes because it will be complicated. Uh, because for this show, uh, I was inspired by a uh, Czech artist, Bohumila Gregorová, and by her, uh, by her answer to a question about the origin of spiritual impulses in her experimental poetry. So Gregorva quoted the famous prologue of the Gospel of John, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then she added that according to the Bible, what is not, name is not created. So and I think it's a very strong statement. And I invited artists to react to this, and to talk about uh, words such as, uh, uh, such as, Tabu, which cannot be spoken for many different reasons. And you can image that this show, I mean, like in the context of Georgia and strong orthodoxy church, was quite interesting. So I invited a group of artists uh, to react to this proclamation and the existence of Tabu, except of Boma Gregora, of course, because uh, she passed away years ago. 
And this is actually uh, poetry of Bohna Gregorova. It, it means he, she, he, she, he, and she. And, and it ended up it. So it's about, uh, it's, it's, it's like a play with the Czech language. And I mean, it's nice to have this example in our program, which is focused on women. And you know, like concrete poetry is mostly about the men, you know, like it's, it's, I mean, now we are looking at it a little bit differently, but before it was mostly something like a man woman, but there are women behind it. And Bohemla Gregora was like an amazing lady. She was in a connection with artists from West, uh, but she worked with Josef Hirschal, and of course, Josef Hirschal became like more famous. But uh, it's 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 wonderful that she had the huge retrospective last year in Prague. Yeah, this is performance by Pavel Bichler, and there is Eva Partum. So it's again like a mix of generation. This is Jan Scherich saying, "Diva never ever lived," and you can read it as a palindrome. Can you read it? <laughs> It's complicated, I know. He had to explain me many times. So you can read it from both sides. It's a little bit like more complicated thanks to the graphic design. We can go back later. And we also published a book with uh, David Horvitz. And uh, we were using uh, 65 words in Georgia, which are about the rain and doesn't exist in English, which is, yeah, and this is why I'm here in London and what I'm currently working on, and I should thank you to the Delphine Foundation, I forgot it, but uh, this is Don Sylvester Haddard, it's a, um, one of the pioneers of British concrete poetry, and I thought that maybe this could be great to do a show of Don Sylvester Haddad at the Brom of Monastery. You know, because he was the Benedictine, he was from the Benedictine Order. He lived uh, in Gloucester Abbey. But he was like very, very uh, avant-garde artist. He was the part of London underground art scene and uh, counterculture. And I mean, he was in contact with John Cage and uh, Alan Ginsberg, and some of them visited Don Sylvester Haddad at the monastery. And I think it's like very really amazing that he could cross these borders of art, progressive art, and this region space. So he's famous for his type tracks. Uh, there is the one of them is on a cover of this book about typewriter art from 1975. And he created those type tracks on a typewriter in blue, red, and black. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> black. So, and he did them on Olivetti Second 22. And it, the type track, it's a combination of typewriter and abstract, so type track. He also did uh, later. Uh, these laminate cosmic dust poems. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, it looks that we are in the end. So yeah, so right now I'm I'm here to watch uh, and have a chance to visit some archive of Don Sylvester Haddad works. It's, it's, it's interesting also for me because he was in the contact with the Jiří Valoch, a very like, uh, important person in Czechoslovakia art scene. And they were like corresponding between each other and I could see you know, this Jiří Valoch uh, um, emails to him and read it. I mean, it was you know, like after 68, so it's like very strange that all of them could have quite uh, vivid Correspondency during that bad time in Czechoslovakia. So yeah, so um, uh, we are we are organizing organizing his uh, big solo show at the Vermont Mastery in a collaboration with Listen Gallery, Richard Salton and William Allen Ward. 
and the show will exhibit uh, more than 40 works from all his periods. So his type tracks, laminate poems, as well as his activities in uh, Publish House Opening Press, which was founded by Haddad and John Furnival. So thank you for your attention. And now I am looking forward to your question. If you have any of them. Monica, so thank you for this very insightful presentation, in engaging. I uh, invite you uh, to, to sit down. Uh, before we take some questions from the from the audience, uh, maybe I'll take the uh, Craig and, and some first uh, question. In your presentation, there is obviously very clear that angle as you're using digital technology and AI. Uh, but maybe before we get to this direction, let me ask more kind of general questions to, to, to start with. Uh, as you mentioned uh, myself, you are here uh, currently in London uh, under the Delphina residency here. And I'm just curious to hear what would be your observation, uh, being a professional uh, art professional and curator. What do you see as the main differences uh, among the, between the, the London art scene and, uh, and of course the, the city that you're coming from, from Prague. <coughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, of course the size, I mean, the size is so huge. So, um, uh, I said to Przemysl that uh, I was trying to see all the shows the first week I was here, and then I realized that I can't because the other show will open you know, the next week and uh, then I will not start to do my research. So uh, I think it's like the opportunities and amount of the galleries uh, in private scene as well as in as a public space, public uh, institutions. And I mean like, I am also fascinated that as I am working on Dom Sylvester Haddad, I, I feel very strong support from those galleries because I mean, even though that they are like private galleries, I really think that they they really want to uh, to let people know about Don Sylvester and the artwork. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And is there something what you have seen over the past, I know, 10, 10 days here, which might surprise you, or really enrich you, or would you like to expand on here in, in London? I mean, I, I had to admit it was my dream as a teenager to live in London. Like, really. <laughs> I mean, who, who didn't have this this dream? You know? So I visited London many times as a teenager. I, when I was uh, at this, in the secondary school, I worked in Scotland uh, for two months in Dumfries, and. Um, you know, I really had a dream to live here. So it's it's like it's amazing to be here. You know, like not as a tourist because I visited London like many times, but now I'm here like like a, like like a different kind of experience. And you know, like I can you know how to say I, I like the Delphian, the people in Delphine are my colleagues. You know, so uh, yeah. But I don't know if it's because of COVID or something, but I think that it's that more and more people are living here, so it's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> I kind of wonder if the digital technology does enable uh, people to view the art uh, in the uh, comfort of their homes or wherever they are, not necessarily coming to, uh, to the galleries. But maybe for a little bit more specific questions on the digital uh, digital art and the uh, NFTs, the non fungible uh, tokens. Uh, perhaps some of you might not be familiar. Those are the digital assets. It might be art, uh, music, which are freely tradable, uh, created by the uh, chain blockchain uh, currency. So do you think, of course, the pandemic strongly uh, kind of uh, endorse it? Do, do you see the influx continue in the digital art and NFTs and the monetizations of NFTs uh, as we have seen over the last 24 months? 
Sorry, I, I didn't revive as you wanted, uh, so I go back to the question before. I mean, the COVID was like, I mean, it's not it's not so like far away, but I completely forgot, you know, what, what happened in the art world. And I remember that uh, at the beginning there were these attempts to do this kind of online um, visiting of art fairs. Do you remember those rooms that you could go through this art fair? and see it online. And um, and I, I asked one of my collector with whom I work at that time and he's one he has a very big collection. And he was completely not interested in it, you know, so he stopped to uh, buying art through art first at that time. And it was I, I was like quite uh, surprised but in a positive sense that you know that that still there also for I mean, for people buying art on art fairs, it's important to see the works in person. So, um, yeah, of course, in in uh, terms of exhibitions, they were these kind of online projects, and I mean, it's a huge topic. We could talk about it like all the evening because probably you know these platforms. Uh, I mean, of course, thanks to Instagram. Uh, I mean, it's funny because it's actually not on the business scene, but it's also on the art scene that people were doing the show for the images for the shows, and the images from the shows were uh, were presented at this kind of like you know uh, art platform, so people could see the images from the shows on platforms. It wasn't important where the show was because at the time the shows could be almost everywhere in the forest, you know, everywhere. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think as uh, Monika presented some other projects, so maybe I'm going to turn it uh, now to you for any questions uh, you, you might have. I recently saw the Batushva exhibition at the Modern Tate Gallery, and I wondered what your feelings were about the conceptual aspects of it, as well as the physical. Because a lot of people, I think, had no idea what they were going into and didn't always understand unless they'd actually read the notices. Do you ask me if uh, how, how I like the concept of the show or how I think the people look at Bartu Shiova here in uh, context? I think I'd be interested to know. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course I was there the first day. <laughs> It's my first show <laughs> here. Um, I mean, it's a uh, it's great for us. I mean, she, she was born in Prague and moved to Slovakia, but uh, I was, you know, like proud of it. And so I don't know if I can be objective. <laughs> I mean, I must have say because I mean, I I, I, I I what I enjoyed the most was the uh, pictures from uh, her workshops with uh, blind. Children, I really, I really like it. Oh, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for the thought provoking presentation, Malika. Uh, as you have already mentioned in your presentation, emotion can be the oil. And people say recently the pandemic for the future is going to be the emotional digital one in the digital public sphere. So I am a student doing media communication, finishing my essay on immersive digital new technology exhibitions. So my two questions are about this. The first one is, as a curator, how do you arrange the usage of the new technology in your exhibitions? You know, like nowadays we're exposed to so many opportunities, the AI, VR, mixed reality. Can you share some experience and example for us? The second one is that I kind of feel the curation is the session for bridging the dialogue between audience and artist. So how the digital exhibition triggers emotion, affect, and the sense of uh, you know, emotion, uh, immersion. So do you think the technology is uh, harmful sometimes for the possibility dynamic and the emotional flow between artwork and the audiences? Because for me, sometimes it's too you know, direct. The expressions too direct, uh, the uh, VR thing, for example. So, do you think it's actually a 
limitation for imagination and personal understanding. Thank you. Yeah, so I use the AI, you know, like uh, uh, in the hypertension just for uh, graphic design and in order, like uh, I generated text with artificial intelligence. So, I mean, uh, I was thinking how if I should use AI more in hypertension, for example, also for generating text. And I think that because the show is a public institution, I think that the show could or should educate the people, you know, because it's for public, you know, it's not um, for our bubble art. And uh, so, so I do this show uh, very traditional. And I think that, that it's enough that the artists are working. I mean, uh, more than half of the works are about AI. I mean, the oldest work is the sleepy events, hip battle links, or it didn't happen from 2014. And then I have works from 2000, I mean, and, that, and I mean, particularly her work looks completely like old work, you know, and it's just a few years ago, but it is, uh, <coughs> yeah, sorry. It, uh, it says us a lot about the changes between those years. Monica, thank you for a lovely talk. Uh, I, just, I was interested how easy did the artists that you invited in Bromov find it to respond to you know, the surroundings and also you know, as a curator you, you take risks and you, you invite people whose work you like but you don't know what they're going to produce. Have you ever been in a position where you felt it's, you can't exhibit something, or you know, has it always gone according to your plan? Uh, I mean, I, I uh, work with the artist uh, in a strong collaboration, so of course with... Okay, so you, you kind of participate almost as, as, I mean, no, as a dialogue. No, 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 <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the artist, but, uh, but I'm still like... You know, like with hypertension, uh, it's, it's a different kind of story because I choose words which have already exist mostly, except of two, because of it's, it's, it's a question of budget. Because, you know, like doing the new video words, uh, which are like one hour, it's um, impossible. But with the Bromov, it was really like conditions because I, I, you know, like I was, like for example, I mean, no, I didn't have a problem with, the, with, with that, but the others had. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you said so, so I just yeah. wonder whether ever it you know, happens as a surprise to you. No, but I, I, am, I, I think uh, this will happen with the hypertension show at the National Gallery Prague, I'm yeah. sure with that. It's rather exciting part of your talk. I mean, like, at, at the room of there is one more story that, uh, I mean, uh, with Ed Atkins, he cut to this old badge at the room of monastery one sentence, you know, so. It was a little bit controversial that we, you know, like this, destroy this cultural heritage a bit. But still, I think that it's amazing to have this uh, permanent site-specific installation by Ed Atkins in Bromov. You know that you know now we are going to you know some church in mountains to see to see some paintings, glass paintings of modernists. So I'm naive and I hope that people will travel to the Bromov from abroad to see this uh, cut it sentence in bench by it that can so it's wonderful thing yeah, but you can image the reaction so <laughs> thanks maybe i'll gonna take the liberty as you uh, for the last two questions uh, as you coming from uh, from the national gallery if you can tell us uh, what are the exhibitions maybe now or the upcoming exhibitions uh, I know when people are be doing some plans going to, uh, to Prague, so that would be my uh, first question. And the second question, uh, I guess the concluding, as we're sitting here at the Women in, in Focus, so what would be your, I guess, uh, advice or suggestion to, to women, uh, not necessarily only to women, to anyone, who would like to enter a career in, in, in arts or in culture in, in, in general? Uh, so you are more than welcome to Prague. We have a very nice national gallery. And at uh, the building you saw, the Fair Trade Palace, 
Uh, we uh, just opened a place where you can uh, spend the time, you can be there, be there with your family, have a coffee, and you can touch the artworks. It's an experimental place, it's called Atlas, and it's for free. It's not the exhibition, it's like an experimental uh, space. And uh, we opened a show of Eva Kotyatkova, Czech artist. It's a huge uh, exhibition, site-specific installation, and this show is still June. And in May we are opening a permanent collection. And it's a huge topic. It's always very under the like, pressure because we are uh, trying to rethink about how we look at art uh, from the second half of 20th century. So those are the shows I will recommend it to you. But it's so those shows are from my collections, of course. We have others. <laughs> yeah, and, and the second question was, yeah, what I recommend? Trenice mm. <clears throat> um, already asked me, and uh, this is the second question, which I don't know how to reply, but uh, I think that it, it, it became natural to me that, you know, I think that if it's like deep, you know, like in person, you don't need any advice. Like, if you, I really focus on art, and you want, you know what you want, then you are just doing it. Wait. So the advice is to be focused. <laughs> uh, yes, wonderful and empathetic. Uh, maybe patient. Yeah, maybe, maybe like it's about patient to wait for <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a perfect uh, combination. I have also <laughs> another good piece of uh, of use uh, for you that the Eva Kuchatkova's uh, artwork will be also exhibited uh, in in UK and not, not in London, but it'll be a nice trip to to Nottingham. And Nottingham Contemporary will feature a really beautiful retrospective of Eva Kuchatkova's work there over the summer. Uh, so of course we will be uh, we are supporting it as a as a Czech center. Uh, so as a last round, maybe if you please join me in thanking Monica uh, for joining us this evening for this opening to the scene. And at the same time, I'd like to, of course, invite you to receive take this the, the, the leaflet. So we're going to continue in the series and the, the next one will be in the, by the end of April with the Prima Ballerina Daria Klimentovas. I think it's also a very promising uh, evening they will have. And of course, we can continue the discussion here uh, informally in the next door with Monica. So, and thank you for coming. <laughs>